Uh, anyone that knows me knows that I love the FinOps framework, the FinOps org. And so I've taken their definition, which I think is, is a pretty basic one, um, but it really does set it out quite clearly. It's figuring out what or who, which team have spent the money in the cloud. Right? Fairly, fairly simple. It, it sounds simple, I should say, but if you've ever looked at a cloud billing file or, or even just a regular bill from the billing console from your cloud provider, you will know that it's a monumental task to try to figure out down to the last cent or down to the, to the last even 10%, how much money people have spent within the cloud. Uh, and it gets even harder when you, when you consider the growth patterns for most certainly startups and, and digital native companies where they've grown from a single account or a single project in GCP um, and are now running multiple workloads, sometimes organized according to best practice and sometimes not. Um, so thankfully, you know, FinOps as an organization does help us to not only, not only define this issue, but they help us to address it. Um, so this is the FinOps framework, just uh, as sort of a, a, a basic level set again. I'm not going to go too deeply into the, um, the overall framework itself, but I am just going to uh, use this as the basis for talking through some different areas of the, the framework and how they affect cost allocation. And as I was going through this and trying to work it out, I kind of found out that almost everything of FinOps really does rely on quality cost allocation. The better you can do that, the better you're setting yourself up. It can get really, really difficult to get down into the, to the very hardcore or the, the run maturity, which we'll talk about in a moment, but setting yourself up with some of the basics, which we'll go through after we sort of examine the value of cost allocation can really put you on a good path to, to getting the, the whole way there. So within FinOps, we talk about three uh, phases. Uh, it's an iterative process where we start with the inform phase and inform is, is really where we're getting information about our cloud usage. Um, we're going to try to find out and, and empower our teams with visibility, allocation, benchmarking, budgeting, forecasting, all, all these sort of things that we need our teams to, to do as a, at a business level. And we want to try to give them as, as timely information to reports and dashboards as possible. We don't want people to make a change to their cloud usage, their architecture, and then trying to be reviewing those costs in three months time. We want it to be close to real time. Once we've got some information, we move on to our optimized phase where we're going to start making some improvements and hopefully saving some money. Now, improvements at this level and optimizations don't necessarily always mean the, the obvious stuff like changing from on-demand to committed usage or, or, uh, or, or maybe changing an architecture. You can also include some things about the FinOps and the cost allocation piece in here. And that might be getting better at uh, describing our usage, getting better at allocating costs to a different team. Those things are also optimizations as far as FinOps is concerned. And then finally, we go into the operate phase, which is really where we're trying to check that the optimizations we made were good things. Okay. K KPIs are king. And we want to try to use business KPIs where possible in the operate phase. We want to look at uh, uptime, response times, order rates. Uh, and if we see big changes in those, then maybe we've, you know, over optimized or gone a bit too aggressive. Um, but for the FinOps side of things, we can add a few KPIs here uh, that help us with our cost allocation as well. Uh, and I'll cover a few of those as we move forward. Once we go through this cycle uh, on the first occasion, we're going to try and start again with, with the information from that optimize and operate phase informing us on the next cycle. And we're going to try and get a little bit better and a little bit harder. And that's where the maturity cycle, uh, sorry, the maturity levels come in from the FinOps organization, crawl, walk, and run. On our crawl phase, um, we really want to try to make sure that we're, we're starting off small and growing, right? We, we want to get some early wins, build on those, grow in scale, grow in complexity, and, and try to make changes um, slowly at first and, and then picking up speed as we go. Uh, we we try, to, try to limit the scope of those changes early on to make sure that we're not maybe causing those production issues I spoke about. And then once we see the value, once we start getting some wins, we can use those to show the rest of the organization, uh, you know, how, how well we're doing and that this really is a good thing. It has a good, good benefit for the company. Uh, in specific terms of cost allocation, it means that on each time around the phase, um, we're not going to necessarily just go through three times and be running by the th third time, but each time we go around through our phases, we're trying to ask harder questions. We're trying to get better at defining our costs and attributing them to the right teams. Uh, it's not something that's easy to do. In fact, the latest 
data from the FinOps organization asked teams that took the FinOps survey to rate themselves on where they were in terms of maturity in, in uh, cost allocation. And a whopping 70% of those, or more, nearly 72%, said that they're either a crawl or walk. So, I mean, this is really something that's not particularly easy to do. And even companies who are fully invested in FinOps and fully invested into the organization that took this survey and self-certified, most of them are still at crawl or walk level. So at crawl and walk, um, let's, let's just talk about what each of these mean. At the crawl level, we're getting some general cost allocation done. Okay, we've got some mechanisms defined. Uh, they're probably going to vary between teams and uh, they might involve, for example, just using the billing console from the cloud providers. Um, it might be that we've got costs down to our business units or departments. We're not very effective at managing shared costs. We've got a lot of untagged costs um, and we're, we're, we're trying to get our handle on it, right? We progress through to the walking maturity and, and we're starting to talk about sort of well-established, well-defined uh, processes and mechanisms, but maybe not used consistently across teams. They're not universally used and accepted. Uh, we're probably getting our cost allocation in terms of, uh, of the granularity down to our teams or, or workloads. Um, and we're still going to have some shared and unallocated costs, some that we're dealing with, some that maybe we're not quite sure how to allocate. At the run maturity, and remembering that there's only 28% of all those FinOps respondents were up here. Uh, the costs allocated are very granular and as granular as the company could require. That could be uh, getting right into the, the so-called holy grail of FinOps, which is unit economics, getting down to the point of understanding one minute of my customer time on my website costs me however many dollars or one widget that I'm producing when, when, they're, uh, when they're talking factories um, and getting right down to the real cost of goods sold. Um, we'll also at this level have all of our shared and uh, uh, a shared cost, we won't have any untagged costs. We'll have everything there managed. And in this level, you're really talking about, um, you know, using not just the cloud billing consoles from the, the cloud providers or, or, or tools like Cost Explorer, but getting down into third-party tools and even home-developed and, and ma uh, maintained tools and automation. 